Hello, welcome to the section of the Chemistry Tutor. Now we're finally going to put it all together. We have spent a lot of time talking about oxidation and reduction, and then we spent an enormous amount of time learning how to balance redox reactions because as you know now, there are a, little, a few more things to worry about, to think about, to double check in order to balance those types of reactions. But don't forget, why do we balance reactions to begin with? Why do we care? And it's because we like to solve generally stoichiometry problems. We want to know if we give five grams of this reactant, how much of this product is going to form in terms of grams? Or how much reactant of uh, reactant B am I going to need if I have 10 grams of reactant A in order for them to react completely together? So those are the stoichiometry problems. And I've done, uh, in part of this chemistry sequence so far, I've done lots of stoichiometry problems in the past. We start with a chemical reaction, we calculate something. But the only difference is now we're dealing with redox reactions that have more complicated reactions to, to mess with, to deal with. So what we're going to have here is a problem that we're going to analyze and sink our teeth into. First step is going to be to find the chemical reaction, write it down and balance it uh, using the redox methods that we've had, that we've done. And then after that we'll solve what they're asking us to solve for by doing the stoichiometry. There'll be a couple things along the way that I'll point out, but that's basically the roadmap. So our problem goes something like this. Iodate ion, which is IO3, negative 1, reacts with the sulfite ion to give a sulfate ion and an iodide ion. How many grams of Na2SO3 are needed to react with 5 grams of NaIO3? All right, so there's a several, several things I want to point out here. The number one thing is um, it doesn't say in the problem if this is an acidic solution or a basic solution. And we've said that before, most of the time it will tell you. If it doesn't tell you, just assume it's acidic. Just do it that way. That's my advice to you. So that's what we're going to do here. It doesn't say it's an acid or a base solution, so we're going to assume it's acidic. So we've done that many, many times. Second thing is, half of the words in here, they don't give you the chemical equivalent. You have to kind of know what that is, like sulf sulfite and iodate. Well, I guess it gives us iodate, but it doesn't give us sulfate, it doesn't give us iodide, it doesn't give us sulfite. So you might want to make friends with your table of ions, your table of polyatomic ions earlier in your book, whatever book you happen to be using for your class, it'll have a listing of these common ions. So you might have to refer to that. Uh, and so the step one, before we get into anything else, so let's translate that first sentence into something usable. The first sentence is telling us that the iodate ion, this thing, is reacting with something to give us something and something else. So to me, that sounds a whole lot like a chemical reaction. So let's write it down and see what it says. So it says the iodate ion, IO3, all right, it says it reacts with the sulfite ion. So you need to go off and look in your book and figure out that the sulfite ion is SO3 and has a charge of negative 2. And it yields, or it reacts together, to give a sulfate ion, which you can look in your book and see that's SO4 with a charge of negative 2, and an iodide uh, ion, which is just iodine with an extra electron on there, so it has a negative there. And this is basically the reaction. Convince yourself that this comes from this block of words at the top. That's step number one, because a lot of times you'll do that. Sometimes they'll give, them, give you the reaction and then ask you a stoichiometry problem. Sometimes they won't. All right. Now notice that this is not balanced. We have to do that ourselves, right? And this is a obviously a redox reaction. Look at all the ions everywhere. It is, it's going to be gaining and losing electrons somewhere. And um, you know, obviously it's not balanced, and so we have to do the whole enchilada to make sure that everything's balanced, the charges and all that stuff. Now let's read the second sentence just to kind of keep it in our head. How many grams of sodium sulfite are needed to react with 5 grams of uh, 